There, Holmes, I've told you everything. You are correct, someone on the inside did help Lupin enter the museum, and I must shamefully confess that it could only have been me. That rogue, under the guise of a journalist, played me, and I was blind to it all. He even left me his card the first time we met. Here, look, uh, maybe there's a clue. It's a shame that you didn't show me this card earlier, my dear Watson. Our adversary is both talented and bold, more than any other criminal mastermind we have ever fought, with one exception, and he has fooled us yet again. This adventure, however, has forced him to discover something. We have the lead, and he has had to improvise. In addition, he inevitably must have had a retreat somewhere in the vicinity to be able to observe us and to hound your footsteps. He's ingenious and has certainly left the location already, but... He may, in his haste, have left some small clues behind. But we have no idea where his hideout could have been. The only place we might receive any information is the Golden Lion. But nobody there will say anything to you or me. Indeed, the Golden Lion is a hostile spot, unless you use the same weapons as your adversary. Now, Watson, disguised thusly, will I do justice to the clientele of the Golden Lion? Tremendous, Holmes. But what am I to do? Out of the two of us, you are the wordsmith. I'll need you to write a letter, send a copy to Lestrade, addressed to the Prime Minister, in order to have an interview with... this person. You... you are not serious, Holmes. It can't be more obvious. This must be the target of Lupin's next crime. I must lay down for a moment. I am counting on you, Watson. See you soon. No one in the street. Even better, Watson thought my disguise was successful, but I'll have to ensure it works on a tougher audience before I enter the Golden Lion. There, there. Sergeant Ruffles. He'll be an excellent subject. Hello, me old China. Hey, over here, you. When someone with a face like yours says hello to an officer, there's something happening, isn't there? Ain't now going on, copper. I don't recognise you. You aren't from hereabouts, are you? You from Bloomsbury, by chance? I ain't. I think you are. I'd even say that you had a hand in the robbery at Sir Herman Grimble's house last night. We've been informed that the leader of the gang had taken refuge in the area, and now you're passing by to recover your share of the take, right? Taint so, Copper. Last night wasn't me aunt feeling a little dicky. I had to fetch 20 pounds of coal in the wee hours of the night, all on account of her feet being cold, and the coalman didn't have a bag. Enough already. You'll have to watch over your shoulder, because I've got my eye on you. Succeeded with flying colours. This may prove to be useful. Hello, Gov. Have you seen a bloke from the paper? Piers, his name is. This ain't lost and found. Have a drink or get lost. Got it? Hello, Gov. Have you seen a bloke from the paper? Piers, his name is. Shh. Shh. I'm a secret wall with ears. Shh. Hello, Gov. Have you seen a bloke from the paper? Piers, his name is. Scram, you drunkard! Hello, Gov. Have you seen a bloke from the paper? 
Piers, his name is. Hey, big fella. One of your friends? Hey, uh, you know, he told me if I had the skinny, he'd be sure to line my pocket. It just so happens I've got something he'd kill to know. Tell me about it. A gent, your pal, I think he's dosed up with some chap at the Mrs Fleming's on Malcolm Street. A door with flowers on both sides. He must have a room on the first floor. Hey, when he greases your hand, come pay me a visit. We'll have a few pints and after that... <laughs> Ta, lassie. I'll think about it. There's a chance that Lupin and his accomplices are still there. I will need to know with absolute certitude behind which door their hideout is in order to steer the events to my advantage. Elongated shape, slender footprint. It's that of a girl, a young girl. Size 5, small feet. Hmm, these are work boots. These footprints are size nine and a half. Work boots. Look, some blood and little scraps of meat. The man must work in a slaughterhouse. Size 8. The footprints are indistinct, but they don't seem to be those of work boots. These footprints are size 9. Who are you? Hey, don't be daft. I'm just here visiting a bloke I know. Hack writer. Know him, don't you? I don't know nothing. You've got a real trap on you. I'd say you're a real fink. I ain't no fink, me. Did he tell you where he was going? See, it's just that he promised me loot, he did. Hear this. I's laying low here tonight. Did a big number already, you hear? The barkeeper over the lion told me this joint was emptied an hour ago and paid up for the next three days. And here I am, but I ain't never laid eyes on you, chap. Could be that he left a little something for me in his snug. I'll just take a peek, will I? Fat chance. But if you want to earn a few cents, go tell Eddie, the barkeeper over the lion, there's twice as much as I'd thought. Tell him that little Sam is no longer in the race and he should talk to that champ from Chelsea. So buzz off and hold your tongue, or I'll have it taken out by it. I recognised him. It's Rumkin, a famous burglar. I need to find a way to get him out in order to search the room without alerting the police. Their intervention would cause a commotion and any clues would be destroyed. I must think. You, Eddie? To you, that's Mr. I've just been to see the Mrs. Fleming's tenant. Know him? Rumpkin? Shh, keep it down. What's the deal? Ain't no coppers round here. Oh, there's plenty. Big Bruiser, my guard, is part of Luigi's gang, and they're after Rumpkin's hide. If they found out that I've been harbouring and dealing with him, my goose is cooked. And yours too. Huh? Maybe I'll just let Luigi know where to find Rumpkin. He might cough up a few bob for that tidbit. How's that sound? Listen, you dirty rat, Luigi and Rumpkin had a, let's say, a difference of opinion. A little matter of honour. And now Rumpkin ain't welcome round here. So Rumpkin comes to me, on the sly. He just scored big, he says. He's gonna cut me a share of the all if I bail him out. It's a risk, mind. Now, if you can hold your tongue, you'll get your share too. Deal.
Rumkin ain't ready to leave his hideout, eh? <laughs> Not likely. The very idea of finding himself face to face with a striped scarf has him quaking in his boots. Striped scarf, eh? What's the score with that then? The identifying sign for Luigi's gang. All those blokes have a striped scarf. They got weird designs on them too. That and their long knives is their trademark. Helps us to see them coming and stay out of the way. Good to avoid the hassle. So, what was it that Rumkin wanted to tell me? Said it's more than ten times what you thought. Supposed to bring little Sam, the chump from Chelsea, eh? And as many other men you lord over. Bring them all at midnight. Really? That's top hole, that. I'm on it. This may prove to be useful. This cloth the size of a scarf may come in handy. What most closely resembles a cloth soaked in wine? Another cloth soaked in wine. Perfect, he didn't notice anything. It's me. I've seen our Eddie. Ah! You have five seconds to put that thing down. If I'm telling you that, it's because there's a way for you and me both to get along without getting hurt and without Luigi finding out. One, two... OK. Spill the beans. Good. Grab a bag and scarper as fast as you can. I keep the rest. And you'll want to pass by Baker Street because the rest of the crew is waiting on the other side. Fine, but we'll meet again. You can count on it. In exactly 13 seconds, he'll come across Sergeant Rufles. Right, what can I find here? Well, Rumpkin must have lost this paper in leaving. Certain scraps of wood seem to have been painted with silver paint. It's a strong wood, no dust on it. It's definitely the loot from the recent burglary of Herman Grimbles. I haven't seen him since the adventure of the Silver Earring. He'd be pleased to see me again, especially if I return his stolen property. Let's head to Baker Street. At last, Holmes. I was imagining the worst had happened to you. It was nothing, Watson. Even though I didn't manage to catch the swordfish, I do happen to have a few sea bream in my bag. I sent off the letters that you wanted me to pen. I am in a right state. Do you really believe that this rascal would dare attack? I do believe, Watson. We'll discuss this later. I have a small task to do which requires my absolute concentration. I'll have to ask you to leave and go to Scotland Yard in order to inform the authorities that the plunder from the robbery at Sir Grimble's residence can be found in one of the rooms rented by Mrs. Fleming. Second door on the left, to be exact. They already have the perpetrator, but if the inspectors would be so good as to wait until midnight, they will find in that very location the top fences in London. Hand in the cookie jar, or jars, I should say. If you say so, Holmes. Thank you, Watson. As for myself, I need to study the clues that I recently found. What secrets are these bits of silverwood hiding? What secrets are these bits of silverwood hiding?
cage. With the wood painted this colour, it almost looks like a steel cage. It doesn't mean much to me. I'm back from the station where I completed the charge you had entrusted me with. On my return, a messenger gave me this letter, which asks us to meet with the Prime Minister at Buckingham Palace tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. It's far enough away, but not too late. Either way, it will give us some time for me to ponder and for you to rest. You seem sad, Watson, and we need to inspire confidence tomorrow. Our audience will be one of the hardest. Mr. Holmes, the Prime Minister is in the White Room on your right, at the end of the hall. His orders were that you should be shown in immediately. Ah, what good fortune! Here are Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Enter, gentlemen. If the Prime Minister will permit, will the gentleman be joining you for breakfast? No, thank you. We have already eaten, and we are pressed for time. Upon reading your letter, gentlemen, I understood that the request for an audience with Her Majesty had something to do with the burglar on the loose in London. I reacted immediately even though I am unaware what the target of the next theft is. I also did all within my power to optimize the security surrounding Her Majesty. That is to say, absolutely nothing. What? Indeed, my power is non-existent once the threshold of these walls is crossed, and I've run up against an insurmountable obstacle regarding how to set up the security system surrounding Her Majesty. Her Majesty herself. Have you at least explained to her? She didn't even deign to receive me. Her Majesty is in a miserable mood for some reason or another, and is refusing an audience to anyone. Despite everything, I'm staying here. If it proves that she changes her mind and rules the affairs of the country from this room. All of my councillors are at the four corners of London to represent me. I even have one in the Chamber of Lords to see if Parliament can oblige Her Majesty to receive me. This could take days, and we don't have days. It's the best that I can do. So, Holmes, what can this Frenchman be after? I'm not certain, but I believe that it has to do with Her Majesty herself. He will likely approach her, perhaps even be within earshot. That is out of the question. We cannot take that risk. Of course, we must prevent him. Tell me, what is the odour emanating from the stain at the bottom of your trousers? Oh, that. It's Robilar, Her Majesty's companion's dog. Leomunda is adorable, but her dog is devilish. I arrived early this morning and dozed off on the divan. This abject creature woke me up in his own way. Watch out for this little demon. He has access to the whole palace and hates everyone. I've sent for another pair of trousers, but I have the impression that they'll never arrive. Is there anything that we can do, Prime Minister? You most certainly can. Find me some trousers without further delay and convey the letters. The addresses where they were dropped off are marked on the envelopes. A coach can be found in front of the palace. It's at your disposition. Very well. My dear Watson, you've become a public official of the nation. I won't join you, despite the prestige, as there may yet be a way to dispel Her Majesty's bad mood and gaining some precious time in doing so. Good luck, Holmes. I will return to my work and await the blessed moment. Tell me, Watson... What are you waiting for? A royal escort? Pardon me, Prime Minister. Could I trouble you to borrow your glasses? Beg pardon? My glasses? Are you nearsighted also? Now I understand the magnifying glass. Take them. I'll take a break. But don't break them. Understood?
Excuse me. Chauncey, sir, at your service. Here, I understand that Her Majesty is cantankerous today. Would you happen to know why? I'm sorry, but I am not authorized to comment on Her Majesty's moods. In fact, no one is. Be advised, it isn't idle curiosity that compels me to ask this question. The reason that I, Sherlock Holmes, the great English detective, is here as well as the Prime Minister, is because Her Majesty is in grave danger. The danger is imminent, instigated by a man of Machiavellian twisted tendencies, who is deprived of all sense of morals and scruples. Furthermore, he is French. French? Indeed, and all men who will have worked to protect Her Majesty in the face of this peril from across the Channel shall be seen as true patriots, a soldier in the image of the valorous English warriors who, weapons in hand, struck down Napoleon. Go, my friend, join our forces and march alongside. Now speak. The facts are that Her Majesty quarrelled with her companion and confidant, Lady Leomunda. The dispute concerned a gift that Her Majesty gave to Leomunda. What was the gift that Her Majesty gave to her companion? A doll's house. Lady Leomunda's personal chef and servant girl were terminated immediately, but the affair wasn't settled for Her Majesty, and the two have not yet reconciled. I don't know anything further. Perhaps I could speak to Lady Leomunda? She too is refusing to receive visitors. Thank you, my friend. Lord Robillard categorically refused the breakfast that I brought. That has put him in a rotten mood also, and Lady Leomunda is in a state. This is the worst that could happen. I've just thrown the remainder of his meal into the refuse. Impossible to remake it. Deirdre, go to the butchers and get something raw. Demons seem to love blood. Now, tell me, what is so special about Lord Robillard's food? Indeed, I don't know, but he doesn't accept anything but. I would pay dearly to know the recipe. I believe that it contains chocolate. Thank you, my friend. If you will permit me to withdraw, sir. I must prepare Lord Robillard's, that is, Lady Leomunda's dog's meal. Ah, this must surely be the recipe for the dog's food. In a pitiful state, the cook must consult it often. This chocolate from Romandy. Marinated anchovies. This may prove to be useful. Mustard prepared with vinegar. Woodland strawberry jam from Sapporo. Sausages. Hmm, there is something here. Phew, what a foul odor. Sausages. Jamaican bananas. Elementary.
You aren't Deirdre. Your powers of observation are stunning, my lady. Indeed, I am not Deirdre. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am... The new cook? Not quite. Firstly, where can I place this meal? Put me lord's breakfast at the foot of his bed. But, oh, I can't let an unknown person into my chamber. Good God, what will happen to me? Nothing serious, my lady. In fact, I'm here to help you. How do you know that I am in need of help? Help from a tall, distinguished man with a long... A very long nose. My lady, my flair for detection has nothing to do with the size of my nose. As for the help that I intend to provide, it solely concerns the dispute between yourself and Her Majesty. Oh, don't talk of that. She will no longer speak to me. It's not even my fault. Oh, no. Why does Her Majesty reproach you? Three days ago, she gave me the lovely dollhouse that you see there. It was made specifically for me by the royal cabinet maker. It's magnificent, isn't it? Indeed. The little candles in the chandeliers emphasize the lovely coloring of the dolls. <laughs> Yesterday, she came to see me in my chamber and noticed that four of the dolls were missing from the house. I wasn't even aware, but Deirdre, who had wrapped it, confirmed the fact. These dolls are precious, and Drina, I mean Her Majesty, was angry and told me that I didn't take care of the gifts that she gave me. I questioned my staff, my maid and my cook to no avail. I had them fired and thought that would suffice for Her Majesty, but no. <laughs> what the dolls look like? I don't even know. All I know is that there are four less boys than girls in the dollhouse. <laughs> Please calm yourself, my lady. I will see what I can do. Oh, many thanks, sir. Thank you. If you find them, you will be handsomely rewarded. I will prove my gratitude, even if it means... Save your gratitude for when I have solved the case. How can I be of service, sir? Tell me, Deirdre, you were in charge of wrapping the dollhouse that Her Majesty presented to Lady Leomunda, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you swore to Her Majesty that certain dolls were missing. Do you remember which they were? Uh, not exactly, sir. But I must say that when I recounted the dolls and noticed some were missing, I found that there were much less with ginger hair than before. Thank you, Deirdre. Goodbye. Thank you for the new pants, Chauncey. Holmes, my glasses, if you would. Are you finished with them, and were they of any use? Here they are, sir. Indeed, I needed them to prepare a rather horrid mixture which is adored by the most temperamental lodger in the palace. If the Prime Minister will permit, I would like to thank Mr. Holmes for saving us from Lord Robillard's wrath. If Mr. Holmes would happen to remember the ingredients for the mixture... Truly, Holmes, I owe you my thanks. I had more than enough of listening to the howls of that da... However, I knew him as a pup. He was very gentle, nothing like the tyrant that he has become. What provoked this change of temperament? I haven't the least idea. Chauncey? It seems to me that the fluctuations in my lord's mood began three years ago, after a visit of my lady's nephew, the young Lord Gwenders of Crudle. Ah, yes. That angelic little redhead. What happened at the time? My lady was so happy to see her nephew that she ignored my lord during the week that Lord Gwenders was here. My lord roamed alone from room to room, he who was so used to having my lady's complete attention. 
at the day came when... I remember. The yappy little thing was completely out of hand. Or rather, out of paw. Trying to separate Lady Leomunda from her dear nephew without success. Excuse me, sir. I have a question for Mr. Chauncey. Tell me, my friend, did you notice Lord Robillard engaging in any strange behaviour in the past three days? Other than the Prime Minister's pants, nothing more than usual, sir. But I don't notice everything. Thank you, gentlemen. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm aware that you are on duty, but I am on a special assignment in the service of Lady Leomunda. She entrusted me with a specific investigation, and I must question you both. Please note, in the case of a successful outcome, she has promised her gratitude to all those who have helped. She specifically mentioned that her gratitude would extend to... At your service, sir. At your service, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. I do believe that Lady Leomunda's companion, the pint-sized Lord Robillard, has access to all of the rooms and halls of the palace. Now, would you have seen him acting erratically these last few days? Say, in the past three days. Yesterday, my lord piddled in my boots. No, I was referring to events clearly out of the ordinary. The day before yesterday, while we were on duty, my lord was rummaging about behind this suit of armour. When I bent over to see what he'd found, my bare skin fell and my lord attacked it and near tore it to pieces. Thank you, gentlemen. This hole is dark and seems quite deep. I must find a way to see what's inside. This may prove to be useful. something. This hole is dark and seems quite deep. I must find a way to see what's inside. I think I can make out the reflection of a porcelain face. This spear could be useful, but in order to recover the doll without damage, I would have to bend the end to form a hook. Excuse me, would there be a clamp hereabouts? Hold on. It just so happens that my cousin, one of the royal plumbers, came here yesterday to take care of Lady Leomunda's pipes, and he forgot one. Lady Leomunda's pipes? I meant to say the plumbing of the bathtub in Lady Leomunda's room, sir. What's wrong with the bathtub? It no longer drains, sir. Normally the water drains in no time once the stopper is removed. In fact, with the force of the water, there are occasionally a few pink bubbles or even some hair that rise into the kitchen sink. Do you know when your cousin will return? He said it will take two days in order to insert a custom-built auger to unclog the pipe, sir. My lady's maid told him that she saw my lord coming out of the empty bathtub. He would only have left one or two long hairs, if any. Unless it was something else. Thank you, Chauncey. My pleasure, sir. Here's what 
I've been looking for. Best to keep my discovery a secret for the moment. If the dog got his paws back on this doll, who knows what it would do. Sir? My apologies for interrupting you in the midst of your duties. Would you have witnessed Lord Robilar engaging in any strange behaviour within the past three days? Oh, my lord is a bit waggish and makes strange around people he isn't familiar with. You must know him well. Has he added a new trick to his repertoire? Why, yes. Now that I think of it, my lord usually has a right fear of chimneys because of the fire. However, yesterday morning, I found him with his paws and his snout full of ashes. The fire in the white drawing room was almost out. I cleaned him as quickly as possible, despite his protestations. Thank you, Deirdre. Goodbye. of ashes to the side. I can see what seems to be a miniature hand coming out. It will take hours for the fire to extinguish, and pouring water over it will fill the whole palace with smoke. I must find a tool to get the doll out of there. Could you please clean this doll? Certainly, sir. Thank you. At your service, sir. There is something here. There, all of Lady Leomunda's bathwater is still in this barrel. It is far too heavy. I cannot lift it. Listen, can you help me shift a barrel? At your service, sir. Elementary. Listening, I'm all yours. My lady, I must press you further. Have you noticed any strange behavior from Lord Robillard these last few days? Why do you ask such a question? Oh, 
I see. You think that my little lord picked up the scent of the robber and wanted to warn me. I was so blind. Oh, my sweet lovey Duffy. Indeed, that is one possibility. Well, I seem to remember Lord rummaging in the garment chest that you see over there in the corner. He isn't supposed to go near it, as it contains ceremonial garments that I never wear, and it is very dusty. In addition, only my personal maid is capable of opening it, and that's in order to air it out from time to time, but I dismissed her. Why is it complicated to open? I decorated it myself, but it dates from Henry VIII, you know. He of the cupbearers, the maniac for security, blah, blah, blah. If you try to open it, don't ruin it, please. I promise, my lady. Thank you. I must leave you, my lady. My door and everything else will be open to you. This piece is actually a puzzle, and all the pieces detach easily. One must insert a star here to unlock the opening mechanism. Elementary. Why, these are my dolls. Indeed, my lady, here they are. Two are somewhat damp, but they are all completely intact. In the future, for their own safety, put them up high or lock them up. You should also consider rehiring your servants, as they weren't to blame for the dolls. Thank you, sir. You are a savior. How can I ever repay you? There is a way. You can use your influence with Her Majesty to ensure an audience for myself as soon as possible. Here's my card. Certainly, sir. I will go straight away to beg her pardon, and I propose that you return this evening. That will give me enough time to improve her mood and deign to receive you. Many thanks, my lady. Surely you aren't telling me that you had to rummage through a waste bin in order to find the leftovers from an infernal... My lord, my dear Watson, within these walls you must say my lord. I wonder if you aren't mocking me, Holmes. I find it hard to believe that Her Majesty enjoys living in an environment so queer. What do you know of our monarch, Watson? What do we really know? Mr. Holmes, the Prime Minister is in the White Room on your right, at the end of the hall. His orders were that you should be shown in immediately. The rug was wet in a number of spots. I don't recall having wet it while empty in the bath. The rug was wet in a number of spots. I don't recall having wet it while empty in the bath. Good evening, gentlemen. Well done yet again, Holmes. The reconciliation between Her Majesty and Lady Leomunda has had a wonderful effect and we should be received momentarily. Is Her Majesty safe? She is in her chamber, and the palace as well as the gardens are crawling with guards. Did you notice all of the checkpoints on the way here? An army couldn't get to her. 
You'll have to excuse me for a moment. Can you assist me, my good man? Does his lordship wish to inspect another refuse bin? Why is the carpet in the hall wet? On account of a gift that Her Majesty received from Lady Leomunda, it was soaked and water was dripping from it for the duration of its carriage. What did it consist of? I haven't the least idea. The object was wrapped. Thank you, Chauncey. Her Majesty and yourself are finally reconciled? Ah, yes. And all thanks to you. I explained to her that you desired an audience and she has granted your request. She will receive you and the Prime Minister, but she will not tarry by calling for Chauncey to fetch you. Forgive me, my lady, but I just learned that you offered a gift to Her Majesty. Yes, I wanted to present Her Majesty with a gift to thank her for the dollhouse. But what a tragedy. It mustn't work any longer. Those nitwit workers dropped it in the moat and had the dickens of a time getting it out. They were so endearing that I couldn't be angry. And it's true that it's quite heavy. If you would tell me, my lady, what is the nature of the gift that you presented to Her Majesty? Well, it's a very rare piece, but I have to admit I don't know much about it. I enjoy frequenting the shops, and a very lovely antiquarian approached me and drew my attention to this masterpiece, as he called it. Oh, he knew what he was talking about, and his manners were so... so... But the masterpiece, what was it exactly, my lady? Well, as Her Majesty's watch was broken, I wanted to give her something to tell the time. Thus, I bought her this clock which she gladly took to her chamber. You know, a French grandfather clock. Um, Pomtoise, or was it Comtoise? The antique dealer said it was made by one of the originators of the genre, the Paillet brothers. Wait, my lady, that name suggests something to me. Could it be... Myatt? Yes, that's it. How did you know? Watson, Prime Minister, quick, sound the alarm. Lupin is in the Queen's chamber. What made me accept this infernal contraption? Tomorrow I will have it carved into kindling for the fire. If Her Majesty will permit, I would... Rather avoid risking death yet again in what Her Majesty calls this infernal contraption. I was able to hold my breath long enough to avoid drowning, but that wouldn't help me against... The hangman? Your Majesty understands well. My fate is entirely in your hands, like so many others. My intentions are not hostile. In fact, they are quite the contrary. They are what, then? Many times I have found myself in a similar situation, and the words came naturally, because they flow from my spirit, which has fain been called poetic, lyric, and imaginative. Words. Nothing but words and rhetoric, often to an end above reproach. I stand before you, after having risked my life and still risking it in what I had until now only considered a game. The words won't come to me because the game is over. The words that I should say to you won't come because they are buried deep. These fragile words that are frightened of emerging, these words that come from the heart, the words that I know I owe you, Your Majesty, my Queen, my love. Believe me, madame, if I was to steal something, it would only be a kiss. You won't be stealing anything. I will give you a kiss, willingly. Open up, your majesty! Is all well, your grace? Break down the door! Your subjects are there. And so ends my gallant game, and, with them, my life. But these precious seconds are the lifetime. Show them, Arsene, how a French gentleman in love behaves.
and continue to amuse yourself. Your Majesty, are you going to... Hush up, you impudent plodders. Who do you think you are to speak in my presence without having been asked? Look at you, a bunch of incompetence, covered in titles and stripes. You are supposed to guarantee my safety and that of England, which amounts to the same thing. In the end, I had to defend the place myself. But, Your Majesty... Suffice. Even the most compassionate of monarchs cannot be permitted to excuse the vermin. Chauncey, have the royal luggage prepared. We will withdraw to Windsor presently. Leomunda, you will accompany me. And you, silence this bell before I have an overwhelming urge to decapitate it. You and I, Lupin. Water. Lupin was hidden in the clock. Well played. Damp footprints. Lupin passed through this wall. A secret passage, no doubt. He can't have much of a lead. Now to find the opening. Closed. Elementary. This is how Lupin vanished. Here I am in the cellar of Buckingham Palace. All of these odds and ends must represent what remains of the sumptuous gifts given to the crown throughout centuries. Lupin must have hooked the lock, but it closed behind him. This grill isn't in good condition. Will it yield through force? Traces of moisture. Lupin passed here. The wood of this statue is intact. It must be quite heavy, but it's possible to lift it slightly. This organ is dilapidated, but the steel tubes are made of a resistant metal. None were damaged in the fall, and they haven't oxidized over time. You and I, Lupin. It's done now, but Lupin knows that someone is after him now. Lupin, he's there. These shanks are from the lock. Lupin must have thrown them down after closing this door again. The opening mechanism of this grill seems to be quite sophisticated. Open. All of these objects are ancient. They must be from the Norman era. Closed. The bow of this Norman longship is very heavy and seems quite sturdy. I need something. I need something. This may prove to be useful. This may prove to be useful.
elementary. down a level. I must find a way to get back up. This bagpipe is capable of releasing air under great pressure. That can surely be of use to me. This collection of costumes is magnificent. All are in excellent condition. This may prove to be useful. These footprints are too blurred to gain any information. Hmm, there is something here. It's part of an Indian totem. 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 Elementary, open. This may prove to be useful. This may prove to be useful. This may prove to be useful. down a level. I must find a way to get back up. With this system, I can see how the rope is attached. Open. A new message. What now? Her Majesty is nevertheless safe. It wasn't without difficulty, but I managed to get her to accept a triple retinue. It's strange, but something has changed in her since this incident. After her understandable anger, she seemed incredibly serene, even playful. I've never seen her like that. When I left her, she was dreamy. Regardless, nothing happened to her, and that's all that matters to us. I have placed an additional 12 of our best agents amongst the staff at her country residence. My goodness! Intruding into Buckingham Palace like that! That Frenchman isn't lacking in daring, and all for nothing, it would appear. How is that? Lupin went through all that trouble without succeeding? Perhaps this will put an end to all this folly. If we are to believe the calling card that Lupin left for me in the basement at Buckingham, it would appear he accomplished his aim, although he didn't specify what that was. Furthermore, he seems determined to bring this whole enterprise to completion and commit his last theft tonight. If he succeeds, we will have lost a fifth battle, and with it, the war. National humiliation is in the offing, our Waterloo. Holmes, how can you be so defeatist? 
you haven't clearly explained how Lupin managed to escape from the Queen's bedchamber and the palace, but he seems to have had a fair bit of luck yet again. It can't last forever. In addition, we are English and must claim what is rightfully ours. Well put, Dr. Watson. As courageous as he is, I assure you he took nothing from his quick pass through the Queen's bedchamber. Either way, there was nothing to take. The bedchamber, like Her Majesty's lavatory, are models of austerity. As for the crown jewels and other adornments, they can be found in a steel cage at the other end of London. Lupin is nothing but a braggart. A trite cat burglar who got incredibly lucky and will soon find himself shackled at the ankles and wrists in one of the dankest cells at Dartmoor. Tell me, Dr. Watson, what do these phrases mean and where must we go in order to put an end to this masquerade? Perhaps here at the Tower of London. My dear Watson. I should point out, Doctor, that Lupin has already been there. That's true. Hmm. But the message in the card... I've got it! He entered by dint of a clock in a great palace of stone. He is going to a location that is a bit of both. A great clock made out of stone. Big Ben! My word, Dr. Watson. You are correct. I will immediately summon all of London's police force in order to set a trap around Big Ben. You are both to join me in an hour. Tonight will be a big night, my fellow compatriots. A night for victory over the French who are... Ah, Holmes, I no longer feel tired all of a sudden. The prospect of Lupin's capture has ignited me. Indeed, I have the wherewithal, too. I caught you unawares on the last riddle, didn't I, Holmes? Well, Holmes... Quite true, Watson, quite true. I will have Mrs. Hudson prepare us a little refreshment that will tide us through the night. It promises to be long and exciting. Meeting the Prime Minister at Big Ben. I am sure that... You will have to give my apologies to the Prime Minister, as I won't be joining you this evening. But, Holmes... Tonight we are going to catch the most notorious thief in all of Europe. We will win the final victory, the one which will win the war. We will reclaim England's honour and without fail get our hands back on the Fighting Temeraire, the Six Ravens and the Rosetta Stone. You would miss all? These last few days have been trying, Watson. In any event, what purpose would I serve? You're the one who solved the riddle of the card, correct? Enough, Holmes. When you aren't in the limelight, you behave like a selfish bore, a vexation, and you act like a spoilt child. In that case, I will go alone to catch Lupin, and I swear I will not record this instalment of your adventures. You are pitiful. 